Well, WISIS prides itself on being a multi-stakeholder event and conversation. And of course, integral to that conversation is the private sector. Now, I'm very pleased to be joined by John Davies. He is the Vice President of the World Ahead Programme for Intel. Mr Davies, welcome. Great. Good to be here. Now, Intel's been involved in the whole WESIS summits and conferences for more than a decade now. You must have learned a lot over that time. Just point to some of the experiences that, uh, that you have gained from uh, in those 10 years. Well, Intel runs probably about 200 different digital divide programs a year across the many countries aimed at education or agriculture or rural or people with low incomes or programs target the girls and women. And what we've learned in that period is the best programs are usually a combination of a government setting a goal and wanting to enable industry, industry cooperating together, both multinational industry, local industries, creates local jobs. Um, often development banks need to get involved because the programs need some temporary funding or some catalysm there. And then the local NGOs need to be part of this as well. And it's the combination of all of those that makes a difference. So an integrated approach, a multi-stakeholder approach. Indeed. It's exactly a multi-stakeholder. And I tell everyone time and time again, if you can get all the right players from those groups together, these programs make massive, massive differences. And if you try and do these as one company by themselves or one government by themselves, it's hard work. So when it does come together in the way that you've described, in a cooperative way with different aspects of society, what can you achieve? What can you point to? Well, let's look at some countries that have fairly low internet penetration and that have made enormous progress. Two years ago at Telecom World, Senegal government came to us with some of the industry there and said 5% of our students going to university or college have a laptop. 95% don't. We want to work our buildings, we want to do distance learning, and we think 50% of them should have laptops. And we looked at that program between the telecoms, between the government policies, the taxes and duties, the cost of the equipment, the cost of the loan of the money from the banks, and put a program together that within one year could go from 5% owning a laptop to 50% in just one single cycle almost, one year. That completely changes the university education process in Senegal. I've seen Macedonia where we've worked with them on many, many programs with the minister. And I remember about five or six years ago, it was about 30% penetrated on the internet. Today, I think they proudly tell you that number is more like closer to 70% because they've adopted low-cost broadband, prepaid broadband. They've worked programs with devices. We've had workshops there enabling software developers to create local value. And there's been a big focus on enabling the companies in the country to add value to reach more people. Rwanda has been a great country as well. Um, our rugged child's laptops are actually going through final assembly there with one of our partners in Rwanda. So they can actually build them both for Rwanda and for East Africa. That makes an enormous difference. It's local jobs, it's local pride, it's local capability, and it builds on the amazing broadband internet that they've developed in Rwanda. Why uh, Intel? Why, why would you get involved in this process? Clearly there's a lot of coordination uh, required to do it. What's in it for you? Well, Intel gets involved because we're working across a solution. You need devices, you need connectivity, you need software, you need training and capacity building um, for all the people to, so they can understand how to use the devices, how they can benefit from them, how does a teacher get trained to use a computer in a classroom. So all of those pieces, we have programs across all of them. They touch our industry partners. We work with the software companies, we work with the telecom companies, we work with some training companies to bring all those pieces together. And that really gets part of the solution. And so we're almost an organiser, but then you have to work with, do this in the direction of what the government's trying to do. Then maybe you have to bring in a bank to do loan guarantees. Uh, and so we, we'll work with all of them. And we have people whose job is not to sell chips, but to create programs on digital divide in countries. They get paid for doing that. And the better they do at solving digital divide problems, um, the better it's for them. And so their job is to do this and organise, and I think we do a decent job of it. Well, uh, Mr Davies from Intel, thank you very much for your time today. Hey, thank you very much.